What's going on, Anthony? Doing all right, bud. Scuba Steve. That's good, Anthony. Hey, Jeff Johnson. No, I'm doing good, Anthony. Just busy, busy, but uh, found a pretty good buck dead today with the HD this evening. Pretty sure it's the HD. Pretty good one. Facebook user saying hello. That has to be Mark Coleman. He's the only one that comes across Facebook user. No, it's not, Anthony. Not good at all. That's the second deer I've I found here on the property now. And the first one I thought, you know, maybe got hit by a car and got to where it was at. But kind of thinking now that uh, I got a, it was probably EHD too. Starting to find a lot of them over in this area. Actually, about every county connecting this one, they're finding them. Yeah, scuba, it's no good. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, nice sweatshirt. Yeah, nice new raised hunting sweatshirt. Heck yeah. Good people right there. Good people. Dustin Gaskill. Everything must be going good for Dustin. I haven't heard that out of him for a while. I usually get that text saying, can you talk? Hey, Mark, how's it going, bud? Let a few guys get going here and we'll fire this thing up. Like always, not going to take all night. We got this one and one more to go before hunting season. Dustin's crying already. No rain. Been crying for weeks, buddy. You're preaching to the choir here. Doug Lamb, good to hear from you, bud. Where's your little sidekick Floyd at tonight? Facebook user, if this is Mark Coleman, which I'm pretty sure it is, know your name is not showing up on here tonight. It still says Facebook user. Is that you, Mark? You got that right. That's for sure, Doug. Old Floyd's probably out shooting his little 410. Yep, I thought it was you, Mark. I don't know why you're the, <coughs> you're the only one on here that just comes up Facebook user, but I don't know what the deal is with that. You're hiding from somebody is what it is. You know, there are sites, there are sites on the internet you got to hide from. This ain't one of them, but you can use your name on this one. The other ones you can hide from. Now tonight, I thought we'd kind of go, kind of touch bases. We've talked about it many times before, but, you know, hunting season coming up. Uh, I know for some of you, you can feed. Some of you are like me, you cannot feed. So, you know, we pretty much rely on our food plots to get the deer through the winter, uh, to fatten them up, give them what they need. There you go, Mark. I got you there, buddy. Uh, I got your name on there. But... Like I say, we rely on our, our food plus to uh, fatten the deer up, <clears throat> their natural browse, which is usually mostly gone by late season. So the food plots are the number one thing for us guys that can't feed. Uh, I wish we could. I mean, supplemental feeding, you know, there's a big difference between supplemental feeding and baiting. Uh, 
but the ones that don't like it think it's all the same. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's amazing what you could give a deer after the deer season to get his body back up to where he needs to be before he starts the growing season the next year by using supplemental feeding and the proper supplemental feeding. Uh, but like here in Illinois, I don't think we're ever going to see it. The only way I'm going to see it if I'm a farmer and I just leave grain on the ground. That's not way I'm going to see it. But I'm too broke to be a farmer and uh, I don't have enough time. So I work with the food plots always have for almost 30 years now and, and it seems to be pretty good but what a lot of people don't realize <clears throat> as a whitetail buck you know he'll lose up to 25 28 percent of his of his body fat during the rut and you know it's hard for that deer to get that put back on in such a short period of time if that deer is not if his body's not back up to 100 percent come that growing season the next year he will never be able to produce the headgear, the bone structure, anything uh, to 100%. He, he won't. His body has to be built back up to 100% before he can get 100% out of out of his body for that, that growing season. So fattening these deer up is number one. You know, again, like with me, not be able to use, use it. This ain't really the video for it because mostly we're going to talk about is supplemental feeding. Uh, don't get me wrong. I know there's a lot of guys that, that do it in areas we're not supposed to. Um, if I knew I wouldn't get caught, I'd do it, but I'm just, I'm not taking that chance. But, you know, we got a few feeds out there, uh, in granular form. We have it in block form. Uh, we actually have it in powder form, a powder type form, a real ground, <coughs> ground up form. Apologize for the coughing. It's been killing me here lately. I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, our rack maker, you're looking at a feed that is 16% protein and it's got a 6% energy level, fat level. That is ideal for a year round food source. You know, you're not going to burn any fat off that body of that deer by giving it too much protein. That's the worst thing you can do. Keep that protein 16% or less. You guys have heard me preach it for many times, for years and years. Keep it 16% or less during the winter months, early spring months, they start in the growing season, pump that protein to them. Uh, so that's why we kind of stick to that six. Now, if you look at our, our Graniac, <coughs> our Graniac block is actually very, very similar to our rack maker, which the Graniac is a block form, but you're running 16% protein and 5% energy. So you're, you're losing 1% there, but still very good for an all around, all season long, again, you come up to the springtime of the year, pump them up when they start growing. You know, you can pump that protein to them, something like our down and dirty block, which you're looking at a 28% uh, block, very good supplement for them deer. Uh, a lot of people kind of look past one of my favorite feeds that we have out there. We've had it for many years and that's the Tractant Fuel. Tractant Fuel is one that, you know, you're looking at an 18% protein, so you're a little bit higher than I like, but not too bad. And it's actually a protein pellet that actually has our amp and our digestive aid. It has the vitamins and minerals, just like our rack maker does, just like our Graniac does. Um, but you're also looking at about 7% fat. So you're actually looking a little, a little higher in the fat. So I really like that one. Um, you know, sometimes guys have issues of deer not like hitting in pellets. So in that case, what I normally do even though this has some cracked corn in it, some ground corn in it, stuff like that. I will actually, if the guys are feeding corn, just start mixing it into that corn and just start gradually weaning that corn out of there. And then deer will start starting with them pellets. And 99% of the time, they're just going to, they're going to be good to go then. I, I mean, I know of a few farms that, that deer just do not like pellets. So it's hard to get them. So, but that attractant peel is one of my favorite ones. And we've had that for many, many years. And it's one you can, solely feed it and the rack maker you can feed it solely to the deer or you can mix it in with some corn you know too much corn is bad for a deer as in straight corn but if you're mixing the stuff in that has the vitamins the minerals uh it's it's got the digestive aid in it you know you're mixing that in with it that's going to help that deer digest that store that that corn where it needs to be instead of just coming out the rear end so 
so you can mix these right in with corn if you're used to feeding corn. Now, a lot of people ask me, what do I do in the springtime? We kind of went over it a little bit. What do I do in the springtime when them bucks are starting to grow antlers? <clears throat> well, if I was able to do it, I'm going to start pumping protein to them. I'm still going to feed them that energy, you know, with some protein. But I'm getting that protein up in them 20 marks. I'm getting up, you know, uh, you look at cotton candy, you're looking 20% protein, 29% protein in our, our uh, uh, roasted bean cuisine. You know, we've got 18% protein in our deer and elk pellets. But if you want to get something in there and you're still feeding corn, that roasted bean cuisine is going to get you the most uh, protein level that you can actually mix in with that corn as an additive and really help that deer out, pump that deer up pretty good. <clears throat> and the cotton candy will too. Now, don't be scared of that cotton candy. You know, just like anything else, there is a lot. The deer herds are different everywhere. You know, we've tested this cotton candy everywhere. We decided to do it for a southern state type of feed and attractant. And we started noticing that all these other states, even up north, where we could we could test that and these deer farms and stuff, the deer were hitting it. Even in the wild, they were hitting it. And uh, now I've had a few people that the, <coughs> the deer just won't touch it, and we don't know why. But 99% of the people that call me, they just wish we had it in a bigger bag. Now we're making a 25-pound bag, so... I said it's a five pound bag. We got the 25 pound bag too. So, which helps out good. So, but that is a very good feed. The funny thing about that feed is, and I've watched video after video after video that I get sent to me of people that will have it and they pour it out just like a Graniac block. And the deer eat it up, and them deer will come every day to that spot, every day. And it's not there. And they pull around, dig around. They're looking for it, they're waiting for it. So, that's the attraction of these type of products here. What they will really do, they will bring them deer in. <coughs> but yes, early season, I mean, uh, growing season, I'm pouring the protein to them. You know, with me, I'm planting my clover plots. You know, I always got clover on the property growing, very high in protein. I'm keeping it mowed uh, to keep that protein up to its highest level. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, I tell them, wait till it, the, you start seeing that flower on that, that clover, when we start seeing it, mow it. Well, during the early growing season, Mother Nature allows me to, and it's not too wet. I'll hit them them clover plots a little bit more with a mower uh, in between flowering, just because as soon as you cut that plant, it goes to its highest protein level and the most palatable for them deer to eat. So if you've ever got out there and you've seen a plot where a few deer are coming through and they're eating all that clover, eating all that clover, and you go and cut it in that night, they're just hammering it. That's why that, that clover sweetens up so much, uh, gets more palatable and uh, the protein levels are what they want. Which again, helps in the antler development, bone structure, the whole nine yards. So having that clover plot on there is probably the, <clears throat> the best thing I can do for the deer. You know, I'm always gonna run honey hole in the fall. I want that high energy food source. My honey hole, my slam dunk mixed together or grade eight now. Uh, I'm going to run them in the fall. I'm going to plant all I can of that so I can give them deer the most energy I can give them because it's got a very high energy level. And then I'm always going to have them clover plots to start greening back up in the spring so when they start going in the growing season. So I'm always giving them the best of both worlds as long as Mother Nature allows. I was kind of worried this year about my honey hole plots because of, like Dustin said, no rain and uh we finally started getting some in now starting to do pretty good they're looking good the deer are hammering them uh i hope they stay out them a little bit more than what they are uh right now but uh they're liking that fresh growth but so for the guys like i say for the guys that cannot feed can legally cannot feed and they don't feed or use any supplements any minerals anything like that um I'm looking at food plots, our Booner Buffet, our Trophy Clover. If you only have a little backwoods plot that's shaded and poor soil, use our Game Changer. Very high in protein. You're going to get about four years of growth out of it. You maintain it just like you uh, as like I said, mowing it every time it flowers. Springtime, you get that up four or five inches before it flowers, mow it again. Hit it again. Let that green growth, that, that fresh start coming back. 
and them deer will hammer it. They have the best protein they can get there. And, uh, and then in the fall, the honey hole, high energy food source, uh, slam dunk grade eight. Uh, even our lights out has a good, given it with the turnips that are in it. <coughs> the fall, winter, spring does too. But if I'm looking for something that I'm just wanting to hammer the, all the energy I can get, I'm going with honey hole and slam dunk. Uh, if you only want to do one, go with honey hole. It's going to offer you the most late season food and high energy. So, but uh, Travis Curtis is sitting on here. He's laughing at me because I didn't mention clover fuel, but yes, I'm spraying clover fuel on my clovers to, to make them grow as good as I can get them. So thanks for, thanks for keeping up on me there, Travis. You'll probably send me a bill for that probably. But uh, hey, uh, Travis, you're right. You're saying you still got to mow clover one more time. I do too. Actually, I'm hitting mine Saturday. I'm almost kind of afraid to now because now the next 13 day forecast has absolutely no rain, but I got to do it one more time. So, <clears throat> but yeah, honey hole for the energy, clover, alfalfa, the peas, stuff like that, Booner Buffet, Trophy Clover, Game Changer Clover. Then we're going to be my spring plantings that are going to be, or a fall planting, do either or. Uh, I'm the guy that likes a spring planting. A lot of guys like a fall planting just because you don't have as much weed issues and stuff like that, that first right when you plant. Um, I just like the spring planting and I'll take care of the weeds and grasses of herbicides. So, and mowing. Well, Jason on here, good to see you, bud. <clears throat> but uh, there's one more thing I was going to tell you about. Uh, and well, since Travis hadn't told me too, I want to use my jolt fertilizer on my honey hole, my slam dunk to give it the fertilizer it needs. You're slipping there, Travis. You gotta go well, up. You might have came up there. I don't know. Okay, who's telling me to take a cough drop? You'll see this. Because it does not help, I'm telling you right now. Oh, Mark. Yeah, I don't know what this cough is. I'm actually going to Dr. Friday. I don't know what's going on. Nothing will, nothing to comment. I don't cough at all unless I start talking. So I don't know what's going on, guys. I guess it's my time. Heck, you never know. <clears throat> Let me see what I'm missing here. I didn't realize I had so many comments on here, guys. Sorry about that. I'm sure I'm not missing somebody. Yeah, you're right, Doug. Ask Kip about it. He'll give you the truth. You got that right. Old Darren's on here. Darren, it's good to see you on here, buddy. I take it you finally got your order, finally. I appreciate your business, bud. Old Nick's on here. Asking Doug what's up, but he's not asking none of us other guys. Come on, Nick, come on. Mark Coleman's on here talking about the rack maker and, and the deer and elk pellets that he loves them, man. I'll tell you what, they are awesome. Them deer and elk pellets are 28 years old. I think, I think they're 28 years old this year. You know, the rack maker is something we've made over the last five years. <coughs> Travis Curtis uses the rack maker and his feeders year round. I know that, bud. Doug Lamb, what do you mean by, oh, never mind, never mind. I misread it. Sorry, bud. Mark Coleman, mix that, rack, mix that power rack right in with that water and tank again. Get her in there, bud. Rick Stillman's on here. Rick, hopefully I'm going to be seeing you here in a couple weeks at our dream hunt with the special need kids, I hope, bud. Missed you last year when you couldn't make it. Now, I know Rick's got some trophy clover and some game changer clover. Yeah. Doug Lamb, spring planning.
Doug, I think you're asking me what to plant in the same in the same plot. Unless you're talking to somebody else on here. Oh my, Cody Jarrett's on here. Man, that used to be my good buddy, but he won't even return my phone calls today. I don't know what he's doing. No, oh, do you text me, bud? I'm sorry. Yeah, Don Kiske did too. He's more important than you are. Sorry, guys. When Don Kiske texts, you text back. Uh, Jason, what's your clover looking like, bud? I mean, it, I mean, is it is it all matured out, all flowered, or what? You're worried about mowing it. Is it pretty bad? Are you just in the drought wise, or what's going on, bud? Good to hear that, Rick. Be good to see you. Doug, if if you got one plot, and it depends on how big that plot is, you're asking what you can put in it for the spring uh, and the fall. When I have an area that I can only do that, I will actually, I'll plant it in clover, <clears throat> like our trophy clover, and then I will strip it. I'll take, let, let's just say my six foot disc. I'll run strips through it, or what I will do is I will, it doesn't matter which way, but I will run the outside edge all the way around that plot, maybe 12 foot wide with honey hole. Then the clover is all in the center. Uh, so I'll plant it in the spring with my clover and then come, come late summer, first part of August here to the 15th of August, I'll either put some strips in it with some honey hole. And so you got the best of both worlds, or I will just ring the outside circle uh, edge of it about 12 foot wide, 10, 12 foot wide and plant it in honey hole. And uh, if you're doing that, I would just plant honey hole alone. I wouldn't mix the honey hole and slam dunk. I'd just go straight honey hole, unless it's a great big plot, you know, a couple, two, three acres. But if you're looking a quarter acre to a half acre or something like that, just straight honey hole when you're stripping it. It's going to offer you a lot more high energy food than mixing it with slam dunk. So. Jason, you're dry there too about your clover. Um, I'll tell you what, bud. If it was me and that and that clover plot still looks good, don't mow it too low. Just top it. Top that plot. Um, just take the tops off of it. A couple, couple, two, three inches off, because <clears throat> you're so close to hunting season. I'd just top it. Cody Jarrett's talking about how he's a huge fan of the rack maker. It's the best feed he's ever used. What was it, free? Is that why it's best or what, bub? No, I got to give you crap. Um, what are the chances you guys start selling it in the tote? Cody, I actually just had this talk, and I know me and you have talked about this for, I think, two years now. Uh, we actually just had this talk earlier this week. Uh, about starting it. It won't be this fall, but they're talking about in the springtime offering uh, 2,000 pound totes. And when it does, it'll be the sack, the big sack, like, you know, when we go and get fertilizer or something like that in, you got the big, the hanging hooks on them. Doug, so about three quarters of an acre. Yeah, Doug, I three quarters of an acre. Really, it doesn't matter if you strip it or if you just do the outside edge. You can do either or, or both. You know, you just got to think late season. <clears throat> if the guy does a lot of late season hunting, make sure that you got that in an area where you can actually shoot over. If, if you're using this for a hunt plot too. Uh, them deer will be hitting that, that honey hole later in the season after a good frost. So make sure that you don't put it 
across the field somewhere and all the deer are over there feeding and you're sitting over here. So I would kind of stage it where you're gonna be hunting over it if he does hunt that spot. Hey, Chris, Ashley, how's it going, bud? Yeah, Cody, I'll take care of you. I've been talking to him about them bags for two years for you. I'll take care of you, bud. You'll just have to go get it because you won't want to pay that shipping bill. Mark Coleman, after 28 years of marriage, his wife finally wants to go hunting with him. I'll tell you what, bud. I'm not going to get into detail, but two months ago, that drove me nuts. But right now, go for it, man. Go enjoy yourself. That'd be a great thing. Cody, keep your mouth shut. Chris talking about his honey hole looking great. I'm glad to hear that, bud. My mine's starting to turn out. It's it's been dry. It's been horribly dry, and uh, got enough rain for germination, but then it went crazy. Oh man, Cody's talking about army worms and his grade eight plot. That's not good, man. I hope we don't have another outbreak in them like we did last year. Man, I don't like that, bud. I'm actually spraying my plots this weekend when I'm down there when I mow my clover and all that this weekend. I'm actually spraying mine with a pesticide. Just be on the safe side with some clover fuel and a pesticide and then some jolt and a pesticide on my, my honey hole and slam dunk. I haven't seen nothing yet, but... I know last year they tore me up. Josh is on here, Western New York. Is it too late to plant slam dunk? <clears throat> In your area, bud, I don't know if Anthony's still on here, but with your climate, I would say you'd never get full maturity out of it before you get a frost. Uh, it can be close. If it was me, I'd look more into plant, uh, planting like the lights out. Uh, that would be my go-to or our new uh, Southern Greens. I would, uh, I'd definitely, because that, I, I just got feeling you're way too late. And you'll, you'll definitely want a lot more, a lot more than what them plants are going to offer you in such a short growing season. But that lights out or the new uh, Southern Greens would work great for you. Still, you might not get full, but I would uh, wait. Yeah, Anthony saw a fall, winter, spring this late. Uh, fall, winter, spring be another good one. We actually added radishes to our fall, winter, spring. So now you're looking at cereal rye, buckwheat, radish, and peas. So really, <clears throat> whatever you're, if you get a frost too early, and the plants don't get matured out where you want them at or get close to that. I don't like them getting matured out before a frost, but the cereal rye is going to help you out a bunch right there. It's going to grow fast, offer a lot of forage, even if you don't get uh, full growth out of your other plants being a late planting. Doug Lamb's not having a good season. Uh, you too, bud. I don't know if you got to get off here, but I appreciate you being on here tonight and with the questions. See who I'm missing here. You got that right, Anthony. Army worms will hurt your fillings. They will hurt them. They they hurt more than that last year, I'll tell you that. It's amazing what they can do in about a day. Or actually, I shouldn't say a day, overnight. Mark's asking, is it too late to plant honey hole in northern Missouri? Um, 
if I was there, I'd plant it now. Yes, it is late. I would still plant honey hole. But when you do that, you make sure you got a good soil. You make sure you put the proper fertilizer down. <clears throat> going out there and throwing honey hole. <clears throat> and I'm not saying you're going to do this, bud. So don't, I'm not meaning this. But don't just go out there and throw it down on the ground and think it's going to do good for you this late. You'll want to, you know, work that fertilizer into that soil. Make sure that that pH is good. It's too late to raise the pH right now. Uh, but you are have to dump the fertilizer to it to get it going. But uh, it, it wouldn't hurt. It, it wouldn't hurt me to, to plant it right now in northern Missouri. Mark Coleman asking, when do you think we'll have our first frost in our area? But the last few years, it's been so all over the place. I don't even, we could have it tonight. You never know. We could have had it in July. It's hard telling this weather these days. I don't know. I got, I, I, I look at stuff and Almanac and all that. And you'll see one saying it's going to be the worst winter we've seen in 25 years. And the next one says it's going to be a mild one. I don't know who to believe. I just hope they're not getting paid for saying that. So, you know, usually I'm late, late October, I'll get a decent frost, usually first part of November, but I don't know. This last year I was in a, in a t-shirt and a hunting blind gun hunting in November, end of November. Thirty-eight degrees tonight in New York. Oh my! It's been so hot here that it actually cooled down in the evenings, and it was fifty-three degrees the other morning. I about put my car hearts on. I was so cold. <laughs> Josh, good to see you on here, bud. So thanks for the information. I planted the no sweat earlier around end of July early August and the deer have been hitting it. Hey, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, but I'll tell you what, that no sweat is for what it's designed to do. It's a great one, man. Mark's asking, how does honey hole respond to a frost? Actually, honey hole wants that frost, you know, uh, you need that frost to turn that plant sweet. Uh, People think that's the only way it's going to turn sweet. It's it's not. It helps it. Uh, the proper soil, pH of the soil, giving it the proper nutrients, that plant's going to be, that's like right now. I know my honey hole plot and slam dunk plot. I'm at a 6.9 pH. You know, I'm running 300 pounds of night, triple 19 on it per acre. And we got in that drought after I planted it. And it's set there. Now it's coming up turning bright green, looking good, about eight, eight, 10 inches tall, and the deer are hammering it. Now, if that soil wasn't good, and the, I didn't pour the, the nutrients to it that I did in the fertilizer, the deer would hardly walk through. I mean, they'd pretty much walk through it. it. It wouldn't be sweet enough for them right now. So it needs that frost to really turn that plant sweet. <clears throat> and it turns that sugar to, uh, it starts to sugar. You start seeing that purplish tint come on that them, them leaves of the Nebraska plants and, that, and the, the turnips too. That's when you know them tanner levels are up and they will literally just destroy them. I mean, so start looking for that purple. Cody's talking about the, he's excited to see the, the frost tolerance of the oats and the lights out mix. Being a northern developed seed, it should be pretty hardy. Yes, it'd be very hardy in West Virginia, bud. Yep. That is a northern base seed. It's, it's meant to do what you're going to want it to do. Jeff Johnson talking about two to eight deer in his honey hole plot behind his house. Five out of seven days this past month. They are there. I know this evening, after I finally got done work stuff, I took a golf cart ride down the road here. I can't believe, or down the drive, at 
5.30. There was deer everywhere out tonight. It, it, I don't know what's going on, but man, they were on their feet early today. Make sure I didn't miss something here, guys. Cody, how's that Booner Buffet plot looking? Well, Travis on here talking about season opens the 24th there in Ohio. Our old buddy Mike Pelletier. I'm going to be hunting over some awesome fall, winter, spring honey hole and trophy clover plots. That's awesome. I know I talked to when I talked to Mike when he was heading out to uh, heading out west. He said, "Give me a holler when he's heading your way. I don't know if he's going to swing by here. Or what he's going to do? We thought we was going to get him here to try getting him on a deer last year, and things just didn't work out. Our time schedule, his time, it kind of fell right on my daughter's gun season." So we'll see. I got old Kip. He said he's going <coughs> to be texting me when he gets back from this photo shoot he's going, these commercial shoots he's doing. Try to get something set up for a bear hunt and coming here and doing a little deer hunting. Yeah, Cody, you're talking about hitting boner. boner uh, oh, let me rephrase that. Booner buffet plot is insane. I'll tell you what, bud. You sent me them pictures. That That is unbelievable. Cody's saying he don't buy into it much, but people on Facebook are saying it's a red moon tonight. Don't let Crumman hear you say you don't believe in that stuff. He'll be eating you out, I'll tell you. It's a red moon. We should be out hunting tonight. That'd be, I guess that's considered poaching right now, though. Yeah, Mark, it is a bumper crop of acorns this year. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. I can step outside this house and all you do is hear acorns dropping everywhere, hitting on everything they can hit on. They're everywhere. All right. I got one is saying Facebook user on here, uh, commenting on, uh, uh, hunting in uh, Fayette County. Who, who are you, bud? For some reason you're coming across Facebook user instead of your name. Unless you're like Mark Coleman, you don't want people to know who you are. And actually, Mark, I missed the other part of your comment here, and I apologize. And you said, he's asking about the frost, you know, saying, you know, how our trophy clover does well. You know, that trophy clover being a cool season seed, that's the difference between a warm season and a, and a cool season seed. Not only is it more expensive, but <coughs> the cool season seed is going to stay more lush. It's going to stay green. You can kick the snow off of it in the winter, and it's going to be green underneath. Or a warm season just browns up and dies over. So these go dormant and stay pretty lush, good protein levels uh, until they're just ate down on the ground. Make sure I'm not missing anybody here. Chris saying he looks like he's going to be dry for the next couple of weeks. We are here too, bud.
Mark talking about holders <coughs> with raised honey, having a heck of a honey hole plot. They do. And uh, we did, we, me and David kind of put a plan together this year on one plot. It was kind of a sketchy plan. I think I scared him to death on how I told him to do it. But I'll tell you what, it sounds like, it looks like why the pictures is coming through good too. And uh, I'm, I'm glad. So, but yeah, they got some good looking plots. They're doing very well with Antler King products. Very well. And back to Mark talking about a bumper crop of acorns. Yeah, them deer, deer is always going to go after his natural browse. You know, that's, I, I have a, a couple guys that planted food plots for the first time this year uh, that have been calling me ask me what to plant, how to plant it, kind of getting them going in it. And about once a week, they're calling, talking about, <laughs> they're only seeing two or three deer in it. It's common, you know, I mean, especially when you got all the natural browse out there for them deer to eat, that's what they're gonna hammer. And I keep telling them this, wait, you know, here in Illinois where I'm at, usually about the end of September is when you start seeing the deer. And that's usually when I'll start seeing the bucks cruise the plots quite a bit get in there feeding, especially my, my straight chicory plots. They've been there pretty well, but, uh, but yeah, don't, don't worry about that. Cody Jarrett's talking about this. The first year he's planted slam dunk. He's a huge fan of it. That's one of my favorites. And for the guys that don't know Cody that well, get on his Facebook page and you'll see what he's done over the years. You know, he, he's the guy that goes out and tests everything to make sure it's going to be right. You know, you get on there and you'll see his red zone plots that he's planted, you know, his honey hole plots, you know, the grade eight plot. Now the Booner buffet plots, the clover plots, he tries it all to see what them deer take to more for him than others. So, that's the way to do it. Don't just stick with one thing. Get out there and give them a smorgasbord and see what they like and what they want the most. And then you know what to plant the next year more of. So he's got some good pictures on there, some beautiful plots that he's done over the years. So I won't have a property without honey hole and slam dunk on it. <clears throat> Well, anybody else out there have some questions? More than happy to answer anything I can. If I don't know the answer, I'll make it up. <clears throat> yeah, Cody's talking about the buckwheat and the slam dunk. You, I think we should have buckwheat in every single mix that we have except my clover. And you, <coughs> you can put it in the clover because the deer are going to eat it down to the ground as soon as it starts growing. The deer love buckwheat. It's a heck of an attractant. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm a buckwheat fan right there with you, bud. Make sure I didn't miss something here, guys. <clears throat> Mark talked about he's starting to see the shift in the deer herd from the, the does and fawns and small bucks to more mature bucks with some fresh rubs. Yep, it's that time. It really is. I mean, they're going to, the switch is definitely on. Velvet's coming off. They're getting territorial. And uh, it starts right now.
Rick, uh, buddy Rick still, ooh, we got a bunch of them flying through here. Hold on one second. Uh, Rick's going to be opening up a plot this spring and some old CRP. What is your blend of choice? Need to suppress the weed so I can get it in a decent plot for next fall. <coughs> Rick, if you're asking me what I would plant in there this spring when you did that, when you do that, I mean, I'm, I mean, if you're getting good sun and you got a good soil, I'm going with our trophy clover blend, you know, I mean, that's the best thing ever, especially if you're going to be down that area where you can mow it when it gets flowered out or stuff. Uh, cause you help suppress the weeds right there by doing that, helping that out. Um, if you're going to be tearing this plot under, come fall and replanting and you don't care about it, I would probably, if you don't want to put the trophy clover in, mm, I'm just going to tell you put trophy clover because that's that's exactly what I would do. You can go in there with some cereal rice, stuff like that. That's going to help suppress the weeds. It's not going to offer as much forage and you're really going to have to take care of it or it will head out and then it's not no good for all anything. Uh, but I would go with the trophy clover if it was me. Jeff Johnson's talking about his clover plots usually look great for two to three years and always seems to get overtaken with weeds. Any idea of solution, regularly mow, mow with clover fuel, potash. <clears throat> well, number one, Jeff, like with me, I frost seed my clover every third year. I always want that new growth coming in as old growth going out. But I'm also spraying selective herbicides on my clover plots to keep the weeds and grasses out. So then weeds and grasses will eventually, you get into that third year or so, then weeds and grasses will try overtaking that plot. You definitely got to get them killed out of there. And uh, so I'll do that. But I always like frost seed in that, that third year on all my plots. That's why that one clover plot of mine is 18 years old. Chris was talking about his scrapes and been getting hit now for a week or so. <clears throat> I bet so. I say it's that time. They start losing that velvet. They just, that's when the territorial starts right then. I know they're, I got the small bucks hitting my, my, <clears throat> my ropes that I hang with my scent on them. Uh, they're, they're hitting them pretty good on camera right now, but it's all a those smaller bucks. <clears throat> and I'll start seeing a change in that. Usually I don't care. I don't know why they do it, but in my area and this one farm in particular, September or the first of October, they start, they start, the big boys start moving in more frequently and, uh, and hitting the whole nine yards. Jeff, I know you've been begging me to come to Wisconsin and hunt with you for years. I, I got to get there, bud. <clears throat> it's just hard for me to leave here with the with the deer that I'm chasing. That I'm Well, that's all I'm going to do is chase it because I'm going to be lucky enough to shoot him. But uh, it's just hard for me to leave here. And now I think Cody's got me talked into another bear hunt in West Virginia. So I might have to go to two bear hunts this year. This is, oh my. And try to chase the deer at the same time. Yeah, that's right, Cody. I know it. Yep. 
We'll have a good time. No doubt in my mind there. I need to get you here to go deer hunting. I know gas is too expensive for you to drive to Illinois now since you sold your Illinois farm. I'd have to hear you cry about gas prices again. <laughs> I guess I could pay half of it for you. Jeff's on here talking about kids on a school bus route showed him pics of 160 inch tin on neighboring properties. That's a beautiful tin right there. There is nothing wrong with 160 inch tin. You want to hang better than 160 inch tins, 160 inch eight. That's about equivalent to a 200 inch deer to me or for me. Uh, Mark Coleman, you're always asking about new stuff coming out. Uh, there, <coughs> there's going to be a couple things coming out. One. Eh, two. There will be, be two things coming out during the ATA. Yeah, I can't talk about them on here, bud. But, yeah, there's going to be a, few, a couple things coming out. Uh, we're really gearing up for next year, though. I mean, the, the, the year to follow. You know, we kind of gave it a little bit of a break this year because we've been bringing out so much new stuff. And uh, but we've been going through a lot of meetings, getting getting ideas on other things and a lot of stuff that people's asked about over the years and kind of just see what we can do. Jeff Johnson, I'll say his buddy, his neighbor shot a 155 inch eight pointer two years ago. That is a stud of an eight pointer right there. That's a dream deer. And guys, we're wrapping up on time here. <clears throat> Got anything else? Just yell at me here. Let me go back through here a little bit. Just make sure. Well, guys, you don't have no more questions. We can jump off here for tonight. Like I say, we're going to have one more in two weeks, and then we're going to start hunting. So we'll fire them back up before spring planning next year, and we might throw something over the winter time. Just throw something out there, see how people are doing. Maybe get some trophy picks on here, stuff like that. We'll see what we can do. But, but well, I appreciate you guys jumping on here. And uh, if I don't see you on the next show. Have a good season this year. Send me the picks. I want to see them. And uh, I'll help you out in any way I can. You guys have a good night. Take care.